here at Global Electronic Services, we offer a wide range of motor diagnostic capabilities to ensure that any motor we repair in our shop is tested for a full range of possible failure. Here, we are demonstrating one of the most powerful testing instruments in our arsenal, the Baker AWA Static Motor Analyzer. First, to start our diagnostics of this motor, we will enter in the data from the nameplate of the motor. We have entered the model number, manufacturer, serial number, voltage rating, amperage, horsepower, RPMs, and frequency. Now, we are going to select the tests we wish to perform. We have selected our temperature test, resistance test, mega ohms test, polarization index test, high pot test, and our surge test. Next, we will select the motor type we are testing. This motor is a 400 volt IEC motor stator without rotor. Once selected, we can begin our first test, which is our temperature resistance test. This test is looking for an imbalance of resistance between the motor phases. Since temperature can affect the resistance properties of a motor, this test is performed at a known temperature. First, the technician hooks up his low voltage leads to the motor's power connections. Then he will take measurements of the average temperature of the motor. Here, he will input the temperature then select to test all leads. The AWA will measure the ohms of each phase, first comparing leads 1 to 2, then leads 2 to 3, and finally leads 3 to 1. Here we see the resistance test has passed so far, so good. Next, we move to our mega ohm test. This test injects a test voltage similar to the motor's operating voltage. This voltage is held for 60 seconds, during which the analyzer watches for overcurrent conditions and abnormal insulation resistance readings which would indicate a failure. If a low mega ohm value is measured, we would inspect the motor for ground wall insulation damage. Here you can see the amount of voltage being applied during the test, as well as the amount of current the motor is drawing. This test has passed. The AWA will then perform the next test, which is called a polarization index test, or PI test. This test takes readings over a 10-minute duration, measuring the motor insulation's ability to polarize. When an insulator polarizes, the electric dipoles distributed throughout the insulator align with the applied electric field. A low PI ratio would indicate that there is some sort of failure within the insulation of the motor, such as the presence of a high amount of carbon, which could indicate burn damage, or the insulator has absorbed contaminants such as water or oil. Here we see the results graphed out. So far, so good. Our testing now moves to the next test. The last test in this series is the high pot test. A high pot or high potential test injects voltages higher than a mega ohm test 
which simulates what the motor would experience during startup. Here, we see that 2,000 volts are being applied, and here we can monitor the current. If high leakage current is detected, this could mean a failure within the motor ground wall insulation. This test has passed. Lastly, the AWA will perform a surge comparison test. The surge test generates a nonlinear voltage drop across all three phases of the motor and compares them to detect possible turn-to-turn, coil-to-coil, or phase-to-phase -phase shorts within the windings. Here we can see the graph as the AWA takes samples while injecting the test voltage. Once the first lead is sampled, we are looking for the next lead's waveform to be very close to the same shape as the first. Any deviation or strange waveform appearance could indicate a failure. Here, we see that all three leads are tested. They all appear within tolerance. The surge test has passed. Here at Global Electronic Services, having state-of-the-art testing equipment like the Baker AWA ensures that our technicians have the tools they need to make sure every motor we repair is tested to full factory specifications. From all of us, thank you for watching.